I graduated Yale with a degree in theater and found my first post-grad job a few months after graduating college. These are the tips that I use that can hopefully help you secure your first post-grad job. And yes, I'm back in Bridgeport, hence the notorious green screen, beautiful background setup that is very versatile. These are tips that I accumulated through my own experience by talking to friends who are also in similar positions as well as talking to career advisors at Yale. The first tip is to clearly define your goals. Do you even want a post-grad job? I mean, I mean, for the most part, you probably do, but a lot of people also want to go to grad school. For example, I know that there are several law school and business school programs that do this two plus two thing, where you work for two years first and then you do grad school for the other two years. Or maybe you just want to jump straight into grad school or take a few months to like travel the world a bit first. And if you're an international student, you might have some limited options as well. Regardless, you should define whether or not you want to work full-time, part-time, hybrid, remote, in person. All of these things are super important to consider because obviously you want a job that is great for you, but we also want to have some flexibility. This is because there's so many jobs out out there and you can't be too picky so sometimes it's best to choose the better option rather than the perfect or best option the second tip is to have good time management and in other words start as early as you can there are many companies such as consulting that recruit very early on in the year or even before your senior year begins so you just want to make sure that you're keeping an open mind and to at least have the option to apply for these jobs so if you're looking into something like tech business consulting any of those corporate e thingies try to do early but I do know that like entertainment and creative careers sort of have job postings throughout the year and even towards the end end of senior year. Like I mentioned, I didn't submit my first official post-grad job application until the end of May, which was right after I graduated. So start early so that you have options, but don't worry about it too much. So once you've defined your goals and you're developing your time management skills and starting early, now you want to submit to everything. You should apply to everything that you even have a small interest in. When it comes to jobs, it can really be a numbers game sometimes. There's no harm in submitting an application and the worst case scenario, you just get rejected. Even though submitting a large number of applications can be statistically advantageous, it's also great to focus on few high quality applications as well, in addition to the normal high quantity that you're pumping out. Be aware that different companies have different jobs that have different application processes, so make sure that you're really paying attention to it. For example, some jobs really just require the resume, other jobs require a resume, cover letter, recommendation letters, writing samples, which is why it ties back to the time management thing to make sure that you're starting all this stuff early because even if you don't get the job, you are learning throughout the process. Also, never, ever, ever not submit an application because you don't think you're good enough for the company. At the end of the day, it is their job to reject you. And if you do this, you are immediately discrediting yourself and taking yourself out of the running. For example, I submitted an incomplete resume to this company and I actually ended up getting the job after like a few rounds of interviews and I ended up not taking it, but instead I was given this internship form of the job. You never know what submitting will get you. Now, the fourth tip is to create and edit your resume. <sighs> Oh boy, yeah, the resume is the most talked about thing, but also the most important weapon that you have in this job application war. First, I would recommend that you list every single experience that you have done and then make that into a resume by choosing the most important ones. But after you have that basic resume, you can then tailor it towards different resumes depending on the position that you're looking for. For example, I studied theater and political science. So my political science essay focused more on like my research background while my theater studies one focused more on my creative background. But there were also many instances where I sort of blended the two. When you're writing a resume, you wanna be concise, specific, use action verbs include a lot of numbers and results. Less is more, especially on your resume where they're really only taking a few seconds to glance at it and look at it and see if you're qualified enough for the job. The next tip is to create and edit your cover letter as well as other application materials that are usually required for the job process. This is also in reference to creating your resume, but please use your school's resources because they literally have like resume and cover letter templates that you can follow to the T. This is exactly what I did, so I can even attach Yale's resources or Harvard's resources. They're pretty much public and online. Literally just use them, copy and paste, and edit and adjust to your liking. Speaking of resources, the next tip is to talk to people. People are an extremely valuable resource and they can help you out in so many ways. For example, they can help you learn more about a specific job or career path or give you general mentorship or guidance. They can also give you a referral to the company that will help out and they can also offer you a job directly. I actually have an interesting story about this. So after college, I was a little bit down in the dumps because I felt really behind since I didn't really submit applications. So I literally just texted my friend, hey dude, like, do you know any job openings? And he actually referred me to his boss who was hiring for some positions and the boss actually allowed me to skip to the final round to interview. After the interview, I ended up not getting the position. So a little bit of a bummer, but a few months later, I was actually offered another full-time position from that same boss. So literally my friend led to the boss, led to a rejected position, led to a few months later to a potential position that was actually really, really cool. The next tip is to stay organized. And I do this by keeping a spreadsheet. You can create and keep a spreadsheet however you like. I would recommend like a Notion template, but for me, I use a Google Spreadsheets template. So if you're interested in that, let me know, I can send you one. This just gives you a better idea of tracking things. So you can see, okay, which jobs do I seem to be underqualified for? Which 
companies am I hearing back from? And it's also great to look at all the progress that you've made. The next tip is to use good websites. So use your LinkedIn, Indeed.com, and especially your school's career website because these are literally alumni from your school who are posting job applications. Join your Facebook groups, your alumni groups. The next tip is to work smarter and work harder. Using all of these tips, you wanna create a structured routine for yourself. I would imagine it looking something like this. So every day you open up your spreadsheet and on your spreadsheet, you have those websites where you'll check daily job postings. You can also generate job alerts on LinkedIn for specific keywords that you're interested in. I would also text at least one friend a day. And there was a point where I emailed the whole entire political science department for jobs. I don't think any of them gave me one, but they gave me some really good advice on websites to look at. I also got into a flow where I was like, you know what, Arnold, as long as you submit at least five jobs a day, it's fine. Like take your time. Now the next step is easier said than done. And y'all probably gonna hate me for this, but it's to chill. You know what I mean? Like this is just like your first job after college, like pretty much after college, you realize that everything is fake. All this structure shit is just fake. Like high school, college, middle school, like you have this like specific structure that you abide by. But after college, there's no rush. Literally, like there are job postings literally year round. You'll be good, take your time. But on the same note, if you realize that you have a job offer for something that maybe might not be ideal for you, maybe it's worth taking that job first, at least for a few months, six months, a year or whatever. See what it's like, see if you enjoy it because you can always quit, move on, it's fine. You should be expecting failure, but don't worry, that's common, it's part of the process. Once you submit your application, forget about it, focus on the next opportunity. Trust me, it's gonna work out. There were many times where I literally just felt like I was submitting to the void, but be patient, still enjoy your life while you are doing this, which is why I recommend to have a structure or a system so that you're not spending hours upon hours in a day submitting when you really should just like take a break, enjoy life, especially after college. Those are some quick tips on the post-grad job search process. Of course, there's a lot more nuance and some complicated stuff and more specific things that you can do. If you want that, let me know in a future video, but I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Peace.